We're going bargain shopping today. I'm talking great stuff for a great price. Step right up, we've got slabs. Slabs for everyone. Slabs in every flavor. Pick the right door and you go free. Pick the wrong door and there he'll be. Oh, and we have some random magazine cards. One of these things is not like the other in the July 2021 episode of the Wrestling Card Market Watch. Let's get it. Coming in, Mr. Brave Young Man. What's up, everyone? I'm Zan, and this is Wrestling With Cards. As the intro stated, and the title states, this is the Wrestling Card Market Watch for the month of July 2021. Each month, I make one of these videos looking back at some top sales, some interesting sales, interesting cards, all with the idea of helping you, the collector, curate the collection that you want. And this month, we're talking bargains. I'd buy that for a dollar. Everything that we're talking about today is under the $300 price point, with five of them being around the $100 price point. I wanted to go with all cheaper stuff this month, mainly to show everyone out there that there are still plenty of opportunities out there within wrestling cards, both from a buyer's and seller's perspective. I've said it before, I'm sure I'll say it again, sometimes I feel like I'm talking to a wall, but one of my biggest pet peeves in the hobby is hearing people say, oh, I'm priced out. Oh, I can't get these cards I want. One reason that I started this channel and started making content and putting stuff on social media in the first place is just to maybe help jumpstart some people with some motivation to put in the work and hopefully get those cards or the money that you've always needed for that big collection piece or for that curated PC. We're also gonna have kind of a secondary discussion on some of these graded cards because each one of them is a, in a different company's slab. And we're gonna talk about maybe some pros and cons of why you should or shouldn't use some of these grading companies. Stick around towards the end of the video, about three quarters of the way through for an overall comparison of these slabs and where they help buyers and sellers. If this is your first time stopping by my channel, welcome to the community. And if you are already a Wrestling With Cards supporter, thank you for your continued support and building the community, getting wrestling cards out there. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, give me a like, and hit the bell icon. Make sure you never miss any of my uploads. So let's jump into the past month's sales and talk about some stuff. 2020 Topps NXT Rhea Ripley card, number 37 rookie card, CSG9, $55 with $4.50 shipping. So here we have a rookie card, has the RC logo on it. Thank you, Tops, for putting that logo on there. Well, I guess Tops kind of gets weird with the RC logo sometimes, but at least they're trying to put that on there. But you have a rookie card, rookie card logo of one of the top female stars in the WWE, actually one of their top stars, regardless whether it's male or female currently. Graded a 9 by CSG, which according to their grading scale is mint condition. All around solid play for about $60 total, but we're not done with Rhea Ripley or CSG. 2020 Top Slam Attacks Reloaded, card number 129, Rhea Ripley, rookie card, CSG 7.5, $30 with $4.50 shipping. I personally like this card more than the last one, but let's look at the grade. A 7.5? 7.5 is considered near mint to mint by CSG. By most people's standards, it's a pretty terrible grade, right? Well, remember, all these black bordered or black cards are harder to grade due to the edge wear and the chipping that seems to happen to all of them, no matter what set it's out of. Also, from my little experience I have with the top slam attack cards, the card quality isn't quite up to par with, say, Topps Flagship or Undisputed or any of the higher quality cards. These are gaming cards, after all. However, with this specific one, I also think it's a pretty sneaky rookie play. Now, I know Rhea Ripley did have a card in this Top Slam Attack set in 2019. Technically, that would be the first card. However, Topps is putting the rookie logos on the 2020. Still confusing. This rookie card debate's never going away, but I still like this card. But here's the point I want to make specifically with these CSG slabs. Here we have two cards that are cool cards that have a little bit of future potential graded in these CSG slabs, which is a company that's legit. Say what you want about the labels and the slab designs, but you could get these cards graded and shipped to you for less than you can submit one card to PSA right now. So there's some opportunity there. There's also opportunity from a seller perspective. I'm guessing whoever sold these made some gains as well. Their bulk submission price is only $12 a card. 
So, hypothetically, they were into these Rhea Ripley cards for, like, let's just say $5, ballpark, raw, and paid $12 to get them graded. Now, a bulk return with CSG does have a ballpark time of 163 days, so not great. You may lose some opportunity costs there with your money tied up in grading for that long, but again, you know, you're looking at, like, one year or more for PSA currently, so opportunities with CSG from both the buyer and seller standpoint, as well as Rhea Ripley cards. This is pretty cheap for a megastar like her at this time. For me, it's all about being confident in myself. 2002 Fleer WWF Royal Rumble John Cena rookie card SGC 8.5 for $100. John Cena cards have really started getting popular lately. I'm guessing this has to do with him coming back to SmackDown recently, but I also think this has to do with people finally realizing that he is a mega star. I'm personally not the biggest John Cena fan, but you can't deny it. he's a mega WWF superstar, Hall of Famer. I think he's got the record for the most Make-A-Wish Foundation's wishes granted. Not to mention he's a pop culture icon at this point. A fruity punch for your mouth. Five knuckle shuffle him in your face. So let's talk about the card itself. This is the de facto John Cena rookie card. Believe it or not, I think the community and the market is actually come together on this one, and everybody has agreed that this is the John Cena rookie card to have. I know, it's hard to believe. Totally, and in all other ways, inconceivable. These 2002 Fleer WWF Royal Rumble cards seem to always be a little bit difficult to grade, similar to the Rhea Ripley card because of all the black around the edges, lots of chipping and edge wear. And an 8.5 and an SGC grade for this, not bad. I think for $100, whoever bought this card got a really good deal. At times, I've even seen this card in the past and currently, depending on, you know, kind of pictures. Maybe there's a better condition one based on eBay pictures or whatever. Some of these raw will go for around $100. So once again, getting this card in an okay grade, already graded, shipped to you for the price of what a raw card would be, Pretty good deal. On the flip side, whoever sold this might have made a little bit of money. SGC is $30 a card with a 20 to 25 day turnaround. So hypothetically, let's say the buyer was into this. We're gonna ballpark the current market price average, I would say around 55 to $60 raw. $30 to grade, plus shipping, taxes, everything else. They may have broke even on this actually once I did the math, maybe a little bit of a loss. It really depends on what they were into the card for initially. But let's say they got into the card for $45, graded, all the fees, shipping, all that good stuff. Let's hypothetically say that they made $10 profit. Based on the initial cost with all the fees, shipping, all that stuff, you would have ended up with that $10 being a 22.2% profit margin. And with that sale, guess what? You just outperformed the S&P 500 average on a John Cena card of all things. I bet you didn't see that coming. I don't know if you can see him. We can see him right there. He's a, he's a 2006 Topps Chrome WWE The Rock. Number 10 Refractor PSA 8, $102.50. These 2006 Topps Chrome cards have really been gaining some popularity, specifically the refractors, X-fractors, and superfractors, for obvious reasons. This chrome set in 2006 is the first ever Topps chrome set. Now I know there were some chromium cards before this, and I know those are popular as well, but most people in the sports card world, Topps chrome is super popular, so to have this being the first WWE version of that, I think that's where a lot of people are flocking towards. I don't need to say much more about the rock cards, why they're important, and why I think they're a good buy and they're great collector's items to have. But just in case you've been living under a rock and you don't understand, I feel like the rock... It doesn't matter how you feel! Okay, moving on. Graded at PSA 8, which is near mint to mint condition based on their grading scale. I would say this is an acceptable grade for this card, even though some of the PSA fanboys out there may disagree with me. If it ain't PSA, don't bring it our way. Straight up. Carry on. Once again, whoever bought this card, I think you got a steal. I've seen these in raw conditions recently, going between $100 and $200 raw. So again, to get this card in a pretty decent grade in a PSA slab, which you can't even grade for $100 a card right now, really awesome buy. Now I would say whoever sold this probably took a loss. But again, there's other factors that go into this, such as what were they into the card for? How long, you know, did they buy this card years ago and just been sitting on it? Did they actually get this card submitted in a bulk submission, you know, a year or two ago before PSA shut down? 
a lot of variables there, but no matter what they paid to get this sent in, even if it's a little bit of profit, this card specifically, I would have much rather have held onto the card. 1985 Topps WWF Hulk Hogan, card number 16 in HGA 7.5. $110 with $10 shipping. So a 7.5 is near mint plus according to the HGA grading scale. Here you have one of the most iconic Hulk Hogan cards and another card that many people in the wrestling card community and sports cards, hobby in general, consider this to be a rookie card. Now that debate's gonna go on forever. However, this is the first officially licensed WWF Tops wrestling cards and specifically of Hulk Hogan. Now this is card number 16 which doesn't get as much attention as card number one. Even though they are the exact same image and the exact same card, they just have a different colored background. So this card in raw condition, I don't know, 40 to $50 from what I've seen, give or take, you know, you can find some really good deals, maybe on lesser conditions ones, or if there's a really good picture of a minty fresh one, you could maybe find that for a little bit more, like 75 maybe. And of course, with this being an HGA slab, the slab label matches the card which a lot of people think are cool, some people are kind of turned off by it. So from a buyer's perspective, I think this is kind of up to you. I think the price might have been a tad bit high for the specific card in the grade, but again, if you love the label matching the card, and this is truly an art piece, and you're not worried about what this is gonna be down the road value perspective, pretty good buy. From a seller's perspective, I can definitely say they probably made some money on this. Depending on how much they paid for the raw card, once again, and depending on the time that they sent in to HGA, I know you can do a 60-day service, I believe is $20. So chances are they made some money here. So we've went over several awesome wrestling cards today from several different grading companies. And the point with these specifically that I'm hoping you can take away from this is that there are so many opportunities from both a buying and selling perspective in graded cards. From a buyer's perspective, I think there are tons of options out there that are very affordable for your PC. Just because a card isn't in the Cadillac of Grading Company slab, or just because it's not the PSA 10, doesn't mean it's worthless. And I feel like public perception in the hobby has kind of swung that way. If you see a card you like, and you like the slab it's in, and you're okay with the grade and the price, jump on it. Don't let the gatekeepers in the hobby keep you from buying the card that you want to add to your collection. And then from a seller's perspective, I think it's important to take away that you can still make money selling graded cards, sending them in, getting them graded, flipping them, in brands that are not named PSA. The facts are the facts. Graded cards are a thing. The market wants graded cards. And I think people are really getting sick of waiting around on PSA, even though they are the top tier grading company out there. 1985 Wrestling All-Stars magazine cards, complete set, with the cards still intact in the sheets in the magazine, $266. In my opinion, this card set is a one that people are really sleeping on. There are several really awesome cards in this set. Very basic design, but good images. You've got big names like Hogan and Ric Flair and Andre the Giant. But you also have some really cool first appearance cards or rookie cards, if you want to call them that, from some legends in the game that I don't think get enough love in the hobby. I'm talking about names like Kevin Sullivan, the Freebirds, Rock and Roll Express, the Fabulous Ones. And how could I forget the first card from The Road Warriors. I think maybe one reason people may not be looking at these as much is because they are magazine cards, and maybe they're curious how these are going to grade, or if the grading companies will even look at these cards. They are in perforated sheets, similar to the WCW magazine cards and the WWF magazine cards, so you can't exactly cut them because they have perforated edges, but I think there is some sort of cutting involved. I have a set of these, and I bought them raw and they were already cut out. The cutting job on these, whoever had these before did a very poor job. And you can see some perforated edges, but you can also see where some was cut. So kind of out of the loop as far as like how these come out of the magazine. I'm pretty sure Wrestling Card King Rob England sent some of these in recently. You could go check his Twitter page or Instagram to see some pictures of what I'm going to talk about. But he sent some of these in and I think PSA kicked them back as authentic or hand cut authentic, I can't remember right offhand. So I'm not sure really how they're portraying these cards from a grading standpoint. We have seen them with numbered grades, I think Rob has some of those as well, but it's just, I'm not sure how the grading companies are viewing these. If you have graded these and you have any experience with tearing them out of the magazines or what the grading companies are looking for, leave a comment below 
and let's help the community learn more about this specific set of cards as far as how to take them apart and how to send them in for grading. If you enjoyed this video and it brought you value, make sure to hit that subscribe button, give me a like, hit that bell icon so you never miss any of my uploads. Make sure you check the links in the show notes for all kinds of great wrestling card content, ways you can help support the show, the podcasts I'm involved with, Patreon, links to buy me a coffee if you so choose. Hey, and if you don't want to do any of that, that's okay. You don't have to. Keep watching all my videos. In fact, click the videos on the screen for even more great wrestling card content, and we'll see you there.